Hello adventurers, today I'm going to get face to face with a small and elusive creature, the CRM 250L. This week I've been fooling around with Nuno Jacinto's 2019 CRF250L. It has been a while since my last experiments with uh, such a small displacement bike, so I decided to take it on a trip down south to meet Zé in BN Enduro Camp so we could discuss and test it adequately. Also, he has a drone, so we were able to make some incredible footage. To be honest, the trip, the tests and this whole return to the displacement of innocence was an emotional roller coaster to me. From shattered expectations on the first few days to amazingly pleasant surprises as I got used to the bike. But I was getting confused and so much so that I created a poll this week on YouTube to try to understand what you guys think about the bike. 29% of you think of it as a small adventure bike. 50% see it as a dual sport, not meant for long distance traveling. And 21% basically considers it a city bike with extra features. Well, this was very interesting, but it didn't help me much. So in this test, I've decided to try the bike on all three different environments. City commuting, open road and traveling, and also off-road, of course. When they announced the little CRF with 150 kilos wet, which is 20 kilos more than the 1988 NX 250, it was a big disappointment to me. But papers aside, if you try to maneuver the bike around the concrete jungle, the thing feels as light as a feather. The single engine on this thing is a direct descendant from the Japanese Sabertooth small displacement engine and it has evolved through millions of years to withstand the arch environment of the Brazilian and the Asian courier services. These things can definitely take a beating and this one even evolved a fuel injection which allows it to start flawlessly every morning, doesn't matter what's the temperature or the altitude. And this just brings peace to my heart. With only 24 horsepower, you never actually feel the engine doing any serious acceleration. But the bike picks up speed quite nicely. And it moves around town with great agility and swiftness. The big off-road wheels and the tall and soft suspension also allows you to get really creative on your way to work. The engine and the clutch work really well at low speeds, making sometimes the CRF feel like a scooter that has a clutch lever just for fun. The bike has a reinforced steel frame, quite sturdy, that extends all the way to the back of the bike. And this allows you to put a top case or even side panniers so you can go grocery shopping with it. For the purpose of moving practically around town, this bike has been a big win. I've been enjoying every single minute of it. But how does it handle the open road? Here things begin to feel a bit iffy. The top speed on this thing, GPS measured, it's around 125 km per hour. If you put your teeth on the handlebar. On a normal situation, it can ride around easily at 100 km per hour for as many hours as you'd like. And this may sound good if you are traveling and seeing exciting new things every now and then, but when you're just getting around and getting from A to B, it gets boring really fast. On the twisties, however, the bike is actually very fun, and for some reason you can get away with the fourth or a fifth gear the majority of times. 
the suspensions are a bit bouncy, so we never get that great feeling of leaning the bike into a turn and following a pretty straight line all the way through. The wobbling will force you to keep making adjustments to your trajectory along the turn. On a normal situation, I would recommend that you try to fix this. But in this case, I won't for three reasons. First, because the CRF does not have any suspension adjustments besides the spring preload. So to fix this, you would have to spend money. Second, because this is only noticeable when you ride like a hooligan. And in that situation, the wobbling actually makes it more fun and challenging. So it's not safe, but it's fun. And the third reason is, this is not a performance motorcycle and actually, off-road, in a very particular situation, the bouncy suspension actually works in your favor. But I will explain this later. The brakes, in my opinion, are acceptable, they feel proportional to the bike's weight and power and the ABS works well on the road. The sitting position is not brilliant, I feel that my feet are too high and too forward, so my knees are like almost here on the, on the, on the handlebar, that's how it feels. The seat is tall and cushy, but to be honest, my bony ass was suffering after a while on the road. The fuel tank only takes about 7.5 liters, which is more than enough to commute around town, but I found it short for traveling. And now it's time to go off-road and see how we feel riding the CRF. This bike has been the weapon of choice for many different people. From young riders who just got their license up to the big bike refugees who just gave up on their 240 kilo delusions. And everyone else in between. But is it any good off-road? You know what? I have to say yes, it's great off-road. But it depends a little bit on your expectations and your ambitions. One thing is for sure, the CRF is brilliantly easy to ride, no doubt about that. And if you fit it with proper off-road tires, like for instance these MT21 Pirellis, this thing will get you anywhere and it doesn't really matter what's your skill level. This bike will make you feel confident and able to get out of most situations. And your mistakes will have little repercussions. Even if you crash, there's not a lot you can break. Perhaps the mirrors and the levers if you don't fit it with proper handguards. You can turn off the ABS using this button here. This will turn the ABS off completely for the rear wheel, thus letting you use it in any way you see fit. But it keeps it on on the front wheel, and I kind of like this system. These are all great things that make this bike the perfect travel companion for a lot of people. But then there are others that, at least to me, they feel a bit meh. And my biggest grievance? The lack of power. And look, I know it's a 250 and it's a very reliable one. But I am an off-road instructor and it bothers me that the lack of power on this bike makes it really hard to do some techniques that off-road are very important, very common and you should definitely learn how to do them. For instance, do you want to use a quick flick of the throttle to go over a simple obstacle on the road? No sir, there's no acceleration whatsoever so you have to use your whole body in order to overcome that little obstacle. To be fair, on this particular task, the bouncy suspensions actually help. Other things you cannot do, for instance, do you want to have a little fun on a fast turn with a little power slide? No sir, there's not enough power to power slide beyond 20 k's an hour, something like that. Do you want to go up a very steep and slippery hill and use speed as your ally? Well, no luck, you can only rely on your traction. Because if you try to use speed, probably, you'll be like in third gear, in no time you have to reduce to second gear, and in no time you'll be on first gear, relying on your traction to tractor all your way up. But this only happens in very extreme situations, let's be fair. How about sand? It's a light bike, it should handle sand well. Well, uh, kind of. It makes the sand feel less intimidating, that's for sure, but then it does not have power to hold the second or the third gear. So it will force you to be constantly between first and second gear, which is too slow to deal with sand conveniently. On real deep sand, or if you're going slightly uphill, it will be a pain in the butt. Besides the lack of power, I also have issues with the ergonomics. When I stand up, again, I feel like my feet are too high and slightly too forward. 
The bike either forces me to move my shoulders over and beyond the handlebars, which is bad, or it forces me into an attack position, which makes no sense whatsoever considering the thing has the torque of a USB fan. If the foot pegs were more or less here instead of there, I think the bike would make a lot more sense to me. So, what is my final say about the CRF250L? Well, for commuting around town, it's incredible. I couldn't think of a better bike. For long distance traveling, not ideal, but it will get the job done. As long as you're not in a hurry and you can withstand some amount of discomfort. Off-road, it's incredible, but also gives me a bit of mixed feelings. It is brilliant for light off-road, but I think you'll grow out of it fast. I would not recommend this bike to someone who wants to develop their off-road skills very much, but I would definitely recommend it to someone who just wants to have some non-demanding and careless off-road fun. In case you are wondering why we are in 2021 and I am reviewing the CRF250L and not the CRF300L or the 300 Rally, it's because my channel is still very small and the brands couldn't care less about my videos. You have no idea how much I would like to test ride the KTM 690, the Husqvarna 701, the AJP PR7, the CRF450L, the KTM 390 and so many others. So if you have any ideas of how I can get this, please leave me a comment. But you can also help me by liking, by subscribing, by hitting the thingy and by sharing. So see you guys next week and happy rides! Thank you.